Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Ides, one of the local Pittsburgh comic shops, had their big annual sale. I went down there and bought a bunch of stuff for uh, 40 cent comics, Ed. So I figured we'd flip through this stack of stuff that I came away with. But before we do that, let's talk about your comic. I went down to Ides myself, man, uh, two times. Might go <laughs> one, one, one more time after this. So uh, this probably won't be the last uh, Ides haul video. Uh, what happened uh, yesterday, though, uh, as of this recording, was... Uh, Red Room came out in in stores. Man. Big day. Big day at the comic shop. That's goddamn right, man. And I even went uh, hunting down at Ides Den, man. <laughs> Became an impromptu signing. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the universe of Red Room. Murders are happening on the dark web. Sick people are pledging anonymous cryptocurrency to have these acts done to some unwilling uh, victim. And there's a kind of miserable subculture that's revolved uh, around this idea. Uh, each comic, completely self-contained horror. Uh, so you, you see an issue, you see an issue, you grab an issue because you're going to get a full story. It's coming out on a monthly basis. If you want to pre-order those comics uh, or order them, you can hit my link tree in the description below this video. Go to the Fantagraphics website. Or if you get it from a local comic shop, get it put on your pull list, man. It's going to be coming out reliably. Working on uh, an issue that isn't going to see the light of day till maybe January of 2022. So you know they're going to be coming out pretty regularly. And uh, if you want to read them ahead of time, three bucks gets you the archive on my Patreon. Well over 100 pages worth of comics. That's more than uh, three issues worth of stuff. Hazard Pale fl Face. One yes. of my favorite designs from this first issue. You draw a mean Hazard Pale <laughs> Face. What do you got, Jim? I have patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics, like this catalog of ballpoint pen notebook drawings. Uh, a lot of that stuff is small print runs, hard to find. Uh, you can get them all at my Patreon. I also post a lot of my original art, a lot of my process stuff, basically covering the same kind of material we do on Cartoonist Kayfabe, but focused on my own comics output. So you can find all of that and a lot more at patreon.com slash jimrug. So, Jimmy, the reason I go to Ides a couple of times, twofold. Sometimes I just miss, like, I go home and I regret not getting a couple, you know, this thing or that thing. And I know that that thing is not, nobody's going for, you know, this thing that I want. Uh, the other reason that I have to go down two times is because it is, you know, it's a shop that's in downtown Pittsburgh. And is it is a race against the parking meter. You can, <laughs> that's you, true. You, you can only get two <laughs> two hours of time. Uh, so it's a race against the parking meter to uh, use that time wisely. It's almost like supermarket sweep because when they have their sale going on, everything is so cheap and there's so much, there's a big footprint. So there's so much to get. Uh, yes. There's so much to look through. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it takes it, me six hours. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, and their dollar books are 40 cents. So I end up buying stuff that I might not even buy for yeah. a dollar. Yeah, sure. But you also find stuff that is genuinely things I'm looking for. Someone had posted this real war stories issue. I have the second issue. Uh, someone posted this first one because that is a Bill Sienkiewicz story here in the first slot. Pretty damn nice looking story. I had not seen this or read this before. So a uh, fantastic find at 40 cents. Uh, very excited to bring that home. Always you know, this is prime time Bill Sienkiewicz for me, late 80s, early 90s time period. Uh, An interesting anthology as well. So some of these are just like take a flyer. We've been talking about doing crossover issues, Ed. So a couple of examples of crossovers, the Justice League and X-Men crossover book. And then Nexus meets Madman, Steve Rude, Mike Allred teaming up. And I love these covers that have like, well, or interiors that have like comics uh, within the comics drawings. I remember buying this one when it came out. I was a fan of, of everybody involved. Got rid of it at some point. Got it back. Um, mentioned the Bad Girl comics. That at some point we're going to get into that late 90s era. And Widow is one of those. Widow is pretty fun because it, it starts out. This is a reprint of like the first issue of Widow. And it's kind of before the Bad Girl comics took over in the 90s. This is a reprint from, you know, 95, 96. Once they were like in full flavor. How about that for a pretty good uh, outlaw image of oh, a yeah. decapitated messed up head flying through the air. Yeah, this is outlaw imagery. The like the way the bad girl thing happens is comics like Widow, uh Cry for Dawn and a couple others, they come out, they they prime the pump and then it'll be like the Lady Death or like the resurgence of Vampirella and then people start, you know, there's a finite amount of that stuff 
and then they start going back to the closest equivalents, and then that's that's how that's exactly you know, right. Joe, Joe Lisner gets printing money in shit. a way. Yeah, yeah. How fast can we can we turn these products around Flip, for go, this go hot, the, hot market? Go to the front cover, man. <laughs> Neil Adams, Crazy Man, Continuity studi- Studios. I thought I had this, and I didn't end up buying the first three issues of this. That that green shadow and that red lipstick. Not an accident. Not a mistake. Yeah, Neil Adams, of course, made his bones on Batman. Uh, very close to Joker there on the cover. I was surprised when I flipped this open. I was like, oh, is this an 80s series? You know, the coloring looks very 80s to me, like that blue line method. This is 1992. Uh, Image Comics is, is uh, you know, on the stands next to this. But I kind of like these early continuity comics. Um, obviously not the earliest, but I kind of like this look. So I've been buying those up whenever I find them cheap. We always talk about doing Christmas comics, Walt Kelly Christmas comics. Yeah, good stuff. Figured that's that's one that we may revisit. This was just a flyer. I'd never heard of this book before, but I go, oh, Neil Gaiman, Mark Buckingham, P. Craig Russell, John Bolton. Like, what is this? This is uh, early 90s. I had never heard of it before. This is the Neil Gaiman story here in the front. Just an oddball. It's from Millennium, who does go on and publish some stuff. This H.P. Lovecraft book, I don't know if that's real or not, but I like that cover a lot. If yeah. I found that in a 40-cent box, I'd be pulling it. It's closer to Reanimator than... There's one artist anything. in here, and it's super uneven, right? Like, some of the art... Like, like anthologies unimpressed. are. Yeah, I guess so. But there's one guy that does this Alex Toth riff that is... I mean, I don't know who else you're even looking at for this for this uh, style and these page layouts. Like, to me, that's very much an Alex Toth uh admirer i suppose but kind of an odd anthology i tend to pick those up this is uh no profit for the wise printed by cfd so cry for dawn productions and it's hart fisher and john cassidy wow so this is i think is a reprint of john cassidy's first work that hart fisher may have published and then this is like a collection of a couple of stories but That's john amazing. cassidy of course a big marvel artist in the in the early 2000s and i uh, can see his start here that's the thing jimmy like when you go through these old comics like you do find proto work of of cool cartoonists and i have i pulled some real good stuff uh i finished my, my roach mill run ed Congrats. and i'm excited Congrats. these are mind-blowing and how how strong they are for like black and white art uh you know, in line with what we think of as outlaw comics, highly rendered, a lot of gray on the pages. Uh, Tom McWeeny, the artist on these. I mean, that's a striking image to open up your comic and see on page one. And if that's not enough, this is a stripper bar and there's like a, a moat around the bar part that guys, the bouncers patrol with baseball bats to keep dudes from going and, uh, you know, touching the merchandise, so to speak. Look at the amount of drawing on there. Rambo is oh, yeah. in the bar. Yeah, it's Munden's bar, man. It's really impressive to me, and they're pretty consistent with just, you know, a lot of well-slung ink on these pages. Oh, this this one was my first issue that I got at my little uh, three for a dollar at the uh, local I like, hard, hardware store. I mean, look at that for a page one, like just pure design things. Yeah, yeah, McQueenie's a fucking badass, dude. It's impressive. It's really strong, like the inking, the compositions, great pages. This reminds me of Steranko, you know, with an eyeball position right in the middle of the page. Started at Blackthorn, probably the yeah. only good-looking Blackthorn comic in creation. Um, FYI, there's more Roach Mills down there if somebody's looking for them, because yeah. I, I did have a, a list on my phone, and uh, those were the issues I'm missing, so it's kind of cool. This is just a random black-and-white pickup, uh, Derek Gross. You see a, a, a list of, like, Studio G of these artists and writers. I have no idea who this group is, um, but it's kind of a rigorous style, so... Definitely worth taking a flyer on uh, Blood Sisters for, again, 40 cents. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, it's one of these things that it's they must always be moving stock in as they are selling stock because I would have scooped this up if I would have seen it. Yeah. Death Angel. This was, for me, uh, a John Cleary comic that I don't have. Uh, Boof, Boof and the... Bruce Crew. Bruce Crew. This was a guy who I think came the closest to the McFarlane inking style did Sinja is really the book that puts him on my uh, pick it up list. It's interesting to me that McFarlane doesn't go this direction, but instead goes Greg Capullo. I thought about it a lot in the last week. Uh, once I picked this up and I'm looking at it and it's like, this was the guy, like he even worked with McFarlane a little bit. And yet when McFarlane was like branching out with artists, it's not the guy he stuck with. He found somebody that I think had different strengths than him. Real storytelling chops. Yeah. Uh, a, a real 
a real following he was developing with with X Force and stuff. <laughs> a couple of uh, new universe titles. I, I've, I I think I'm missing one or two of the new universe number one issues. So uh, I have never read any of these, Ed. They're I plan to do that at some point. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, they they read. They're just they're just um, a RC, lot of words. RC cola. A lot of words. Yeah, this one's cool. It's it's uh, local cartoonist Ron Friends doing the artwork. So I like seeing that uh, that name. In when, when I was a kid, he was selling pages between uh, one and five dollars of uh, Kickers Incorporated comics. Man, see, I would have loved to pick those up. I mean, he's good. You can see compared to uh, DP Seven, much more dynamic pages and stuff. You know, I think Ron is is. Uh, an underrated cartoonist. I bought but, some. I bought some Ron Friends Thor's. Oh, nice for for, for uh, the the sale. I'm curious to check these out from the standpoint of like this is Valiant, you know, zero point oh or whatever. Like Jim Shooter creating a universe. He would do it several times in the '90s. So kind of interesting to see how that starts. And tell me, this was not forty cents. This was this. I paid two dollars for okay. this. Okay. So uh, all their stuff's on sale to some degree. This was in their adult comics or underground comics section, and I think it was four dollars for half off. Big Apple Comics. This is published by um, Flo Stein, Steinberg. Yeah. The longtime secretary to Stan Lee. I learned about it in a 1986 issue of Amazing Heroes, and it's stunning. I'm just going to flip through. This is uh, John Severin and, and John Verputin, I think, is the is the guy. Archie Goodwin doing a tour of peep shows in Times Square. Perfect. There's classic and sleazy ones, Ed, and by the time he gets home, he's a changed man. Yeah, shit, man. You might have some... Uh... Wally Wood doing My Word, a play on his famous My World. Wow. I mean, his art is just stunning. And, you know, commentating, this is mid-70s, so it's kind of like um, this, mainstream guys doing an underground comic. This is what you would always hear, too, like the function of the adult theater is, like, couples going in, fucking jerking each other off while watching weird stuff. I love this scene of, like... The deuce. Oh, man. Really strong. Um, you know, three-page oh, classic story. image. Super famous. Yeah. How about this one for another super famous, iconic image? So really great Wally Wood story. Al Williamson. Al Williamson can do stuff with ink lines that like no other human being can do. Perfected that Nightingale line. Man, I'll say really good stuff. Um, Linda Fight, who's I, I, I can't I'm not sure where to place her, but I've seen her work in other things. I think mm -hmm. she might have been a uh, an underground artist. This is interesting. Over and under. So uh, Larry Hama and Ralph Reese do this side. Neil Adams does this side, and it's sort of like secretary by day, um, I don't, hooker by night, uh, you know, classic movie. I, I think there's several movie franchises with that premise, but that's what you see going on here. Their styles are almost too similar, but what I love about it is the eight panel grid that yeah. goes through this, because it's four really tight pages of this kind of story and storytelling, and I think that's it's pretty fantastic, like, you know, for comics. Like, wow. Hama and uh, Reese were, were the students of uh, Wally Wood at the time. Paul Kirchner. Only one page from him, but that's always welcome to me. Alan Weiss, who had a, a long run at Marvel Comics. Uh, kind of a jack of all trades. I think he followed Jim Shooter to Valiant, maybe. And I thought this character was interesting because I have Bald Eagle in, uh, in yeah. Street Angel. Guy on a board with no legs. Um, guy on a board with no legs. Yeah, see that dude in that movie, Kids? Yes. Uh, Herb Trimpey inked by Wally Wood. Nice. That's a pretty good pairing, right? And I don't know what this is. I feel like this was a pitch for... Probably. I, it looks like a newspaper strip. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Hard, hard for me to know exactly where some of this stuff is coming out of. But then Herb Trimpey has this finished page, and like even his signature looks different here. This finished story that's... He's going well, heavy metal. Well, just check it out. It's it's really awesome. You know, like it looks like it's full pages, but if you look, you know, they're broken up into panels, like within the pages, and the uh, the final story. And you can see, see, I don't. It's it's a compromised quality. Part of the reason it was cheap, probably. But he finds a token, and this is set in the future. And they talk about, you know, this this was basically a uh, a trading device. I read about this. Comic. It is very heavy metal like. I, re I read this comic Flo in uh, the Marvel Untold Tales uh, a book w mentioned the thing, and it really does just make me very curious how Flo Steinberg, the, the secretary of Marvel Comics, is just like yeah, I'm it's gonna, a peculiar I'm gonna publish thing. a book and have amazing people in it. Like, there's a lot to that that you know. Beg begs some questions. We need to find some answers. I tend to buy this kind of stuff whenever I come across Amazing Heroes or Comic Scene for 40 cents. Like, I'm going to buy them. Yeah. This one's really great because it's Wild Tundra. So this is 
you know, in, in the thralls of Tundra, whenever they have all their books, 1991, the other, like, there's two main features in this. One of them is Tundra. One of them is Caliber I see, from I the see early that guy 90s. Davis, Vince Lock gimmick right so, there. So this is, you know, good stuff for me. I'm interested in both of those companies. 40 cents, I'll get my money's worth out of that. And then I bought the comic scenes that I could find there. And I flagged a few things. We'll kind of flip through this. For anybody unfamiliar with comic scenes, I'm so impressed by the breadth of what they cover. So this is kind of cool. Black Kiss, Howard Chaikin coverage at the time. Um, I came to this work later, and it seemed really, like, fringe. Right. So to have it covered in a glossy magazine like this, kind of cool to see that article. And also, Chaikin doesn't know what the response is going to be. This is promo. So it's like, yeah, he's taking, taking, he's swinging for something there. And it's kind of neat to see that. Mobius Silver Surfer next to, you know, contemporary Silver Surfer stuff. There would be a lot of, like, um, advanced art in a lot of these things. Yeah. Uh, because it's promotional and comics were just produced, like, down to the wire back then. Cosmic Odyssey. Cosmic Odyssey. Mike Mignola. We're going to do a big video on that we one. We are Let's... going to. But I think this is a really striking image for, uh, you know, premature Mike Mignola, but still real badass. Oh, yeah. I think that was one of those series that um, helped to keep him moving in that direction of, like, towards superstardom. I pulled this because it's Jim Lee and Klaus Janssen, but this is your video game ad art. Yes, it is. You know, I think it's re-inked for the video games, but that's your iconic pose that certainly doesn't hurt to have that thing in every comic. Right. And then how about that? A full-color, nice Mobius Iron Man? That's, I should just rip that out and put it on my wall. One year you had the Michael Keaton Batman. Next year you have the Rocketeer. Rob Liefeld's original designs for Cable. Yeah, like, if you could see some of this stuff, like, there'll be, like, Schwarzenegger mixed with something or other. A single blade coming out, like a Wolverine single blade coming out of the forearm. Yeah, he was a Grips fan. (laughs) And, you know, take a look at some of these headings. As you say, Ed, you know, Rocketeer being follow-up to these movies, but, like, Reed Fleming's getting cover billing. Wonder Man's in here. Terrible. Uh, X-Force and New Warriors. You know, it's, it's a real snapshot of... Everything that was going on. So, animated Batman, Shadowhawk, Cyber Force. Love and Rockets. That's exactly it. Comics for real people. <laughs> Love and Rockets, the Hernandez brothers getting covered in comic scene and getting covered in a magazine with Shadowhawk and Cyber Force. And now, now comic scene would be. <laughs> Cyber Force. Uh, according to Silvestri, character development is a big part of Cyber Force. Yeah, tell me about Rip Law. <laughs> this, this magazine would be. On newsstands everywhere, every uh, supermarket, every Walden Books, there had to be several hundred thousand of these in circulation. The publishers of Starlog were the publishers of of Comic Scene, uh, so like stuff like that, that Love and Rockets coverage had to, had to yeah. give a great boost. I think so. I, I think it's. I think a lot of this stuff, you would have to be really on the edge of comics to be aware of all the stuff that's covered in these. I used to get them wherever I'd find them, maybe a newsstand, something like that, maybe a flea market, and it'd be random, but they'd have all this stuff. So like, you know, Harvey Kurtzman eulogy. It's good. You know, this might've been the first time I, I got to read about Harvey Kurtzman. Um, wonder what killed him. Might, might be this next article, image of an assassin. <laughs> yeah, but, and the fact that it, it sold, <laughs> you know, five million copies. Oh man. But it, this is pretty badass. Again, with the Jim Lee, if you're a Jim Lee fan at the time, I was loving it. You can see all of these like black and white reproductions of death blow. My anticipation of death blow was so high because this was just, you know, eating this stuff up, you know, and turn the page. Great Jack Kirby reproductions of some of his drawings at a nice high scale, black and white. And Steve Ditko, that's a pretty pretty strong opener. So I just grabbed whichever issues they had laying around, but you can kind of see snapshots of what was going on. Alex Ross showing up, obviously Valiant, you know, early 90s would have been a, uh, a force. The Legend of Hellboy. So Mike Mignola's early, early days, you know, and it's so early that you just get a little bit of Hellboy art, and they're showing off, like, X-Men and Shadow and Batman um, because we don't know what Hellboy is, Mike. Right. So it's kind of neat to see those kinds of things, like even reading what Mignola's ideas for Hellboy would have been at the beginning, you know, and how much that has changed. Um, Indie, the independent comics guides, these are just bizarre. I have several of these and several iterations, and I think they're even published by different people, but Indie is a a name that carries through um, a lot of different people's different ideas of what comics are and trying to distinguish. You know, it's that war between mainstream and alternative 
but there's more to alternative than just fanographics and, yeah. and slice of life. So it's ads, interviews. It's the same kind of stuff. Fanico being called out, previews, Baker Street. It's the kind of Western font, NWA's font. <laughs> early digital publishing, you know, early 90s here. There's a couple of, uh, you know, like comics preview pages in the back. This is Kyle Hotz, this last um, preview. Great creator, man. Yeah, I think it looks pretty strong. And, I mean, this could be photocopied. It's not, but it's it's that kind of aesthetic of, yeah. uh, like, zines that we still see, you know, being produced really throughout, I don't know, the last 50 years of comics, that black and white kind of production. This was my big score. This is Will Elder, The Mad Playboy of Art. It's out of print. Um, I got a used copy there for 12 bucks that, as you can see, is basically in new shape. And Greg Sadowski is the co-author of this. He wrote, he's written a lot of these, like, biography monographs, um, so, you know, name I recognize, but you get an overview of Elder's career and a little bit of his history. So, you know, some childhood stuff, where he went to school, things of that nature, but mostly focusing on his art. Uh, you get some of this, like, little scene stuff from his sketchbooks, from things that he did on his own, as well as the, uh, you know, apparently he was a cut-up all the time. Yeah. So you get those stories, fun stories from uh, fooling around uh, with his family and then fooling around at places like the EC offices and where he worked. They're broken up into different groups of work. So like Mad Magazine gets a section, Panic, uh, Trump, all of these different pieces get a section. I think his ad parody work is really strong, so that was one that I flagged. Also, great reproductions of this stuff. Oh, yeah. That's something Fanographics is kind of figuring out early on. This is neat. This is a, um illustration job for a publication at the time, so it's not... It's not comedy, even though there's Kurtzman and Elder fooling around. <laughs> Author experts, Kurtzman and Elder. But it's it's a more straightforward illustration job to kind of point out what Elder could do. You know, like, he's a badass, man. Yeah. It doesn't say where it's from. It looks like something um, that would be in Trump, actually. It does say where it's from. It's pageant, I think, is okay. the name of it. So a, a more, like I said, not comedy. You know, it's more of a traditional illustration. But you see these kinds of things of, like, there's a lot of process stuff. Sketches yeah. and things. This is from Playboy magazine, and I flagged it because, you know, he's doing all of these covers, the, the logos, the lettering, everything. Phenomenal. That's a two-page spread. But then you get to see, like, the sketches for these. Some of them get rejected. Some of them get refined or changed as they go along. Phenomenal artist. I'm thrilled to pick this up. This is a book I've been looking at since the early 2000s because it went out of print early on. And because it's a $50 book, I just never uh, never pulled the trigger, and then it was out of print and marked up. So... 12 bucks. What a deal. Yeah. yeah. This is a book that we'll probably look at in depth at some point on this channel, but I figured I, you know, I'm showing the haul of what I got from their sale, and uh, this is the crown jewel on there. I don't doubt that we'll go through some of those uh, comic scenes and stuff uh, individually. Yeah, I agree. Good to go? I am. All right, K-Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What you got out there, Jim? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art. You can see how I make Street Angel, Octobriana, and all the other comics that I've made. Patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Comics, out in the wild. Uh, as of this recording, issue one's out there, man. Get it while it's hot. It's going to be a monthly comic, uh, so every four weeks, the machine has begun, Jimmy, and we are hmm. pumping these comics out by the metric tons, literally. Uh, get it put on your pull list at your local shop. Uh, if you don't have a good store uh, near you, pre-order and order the comics through Fantagraphics uh, at the link tree in the description below this video. There are four issues that you could order or pre-order uh, right now. If you want to read the comics ahead of time, hit up my Patreon, patreon.com. Slash Head Piscor have uh, well over three complete stories uh, on there right now. This is over a hundred pages of comics, and three bucks gets the archive for everything. Now I want to know how much that first issue shipment weighed, because yeah. it really is probably like ten tons, something right. ridiculous. <laughs> You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on. And who knows, maybe we'll get a weight report on how, how much uh, issue one weighs. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, I gotta go show you my haul of uh, Ides Comics, man. Give these guys their merchandise orders, we're gonna be on our way. Read more comics.